I used to work for this company and the manager um, actually ended up resigning from her position because of me. What happened was she had called me into the office because I was late. I said, okay, cool. I appear to take it on the chin, but in my head, I'm plotting. Now I'm plotting because I'm thinking that being late is the office culture. Everybody came in late. My seat conveniently located by the door. I grabbed me a pen and a pad because I'm trying to get this label off. No, but I grabbed that pen and pad. And I started marking down every somebody who was late. Don't act like y'all ain't know I was a snitch. So finally, after I get 30 days worth of data, because you have to make these clinical studies with enough evidence, I put together a nice little email and send it off to the district manager. Here you go. A gift for you. Later that day, that district manager gives me a call. We have a discussion and I tell her how favoritism is running rampant within the um, facility based on, you know, issues that occur with certain individuals. They are handled in the same manner that they would be if it were me. Girl, after that meeting, it went down. My manager calls an early morning meeting and my mother heart thumping hard because I know damn well that her manager done talked to her. Ooh, my lips are ashy. So she starts the meeting off by saying, you know, that she's sorry that someone feels as if everyone isn't treated equal, blah, 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 blah. But then this bitch had the nerve to say, I'm sorry some of you don't have friends. Who you talking about? Who ain't got no friends? Just because you ain't my friend don't mean I ain't got no friends. But at the end of the meeting, she tells the team, she says, I've decided to resign. Bad. <laughs> Basically what had happened was that I was going on the B train uptown. I was going from 135th to 145th station when this was happening. And everyone got off at 135th Street, except for me, the guy who tried to attack me, and then some other guy at the end of the train. And I wanted to get off, but the train door was closing, and I didn't have enough time to get off in time. And this guy just kept getting closer and closer to me, and I didn't have mace or pe pepper spray like people in the comments were suggesting. I just had my phone, so I started recording as soon as he got really close to me, and I was worried about my safety. Um, and as you can see in the video, he tried to hit me. I'm not sure what he was going for, if he was grabbing me or hitting me, but I started screaming as soon as he got near me with his hands. And luckily there was another guy at the end of the train who started defending me and was like, dude, back up, like get away from her. She's obviously scared. And he at first wouldn't leave me alone, but then the guy at the end of the car stood up and protected me. And then as soon as the train stopped, I ran out of the station, went to a Dunkin' Donuts, uber to work but yeah definitely the most traumatizing experience of my life i want to look into getting pepper spray and mace because that was very scary but be safe out there ladies new york city right now is rampant with crime don't get on a car alone or with only a few people like i did make sure it's a crowded car and if you have to uber take a cab so let me tell y'all the story about how i walked in on my boyfriend eating his sister-in-law's kitty cat, AKA his brother's wife. Let's get into it. Before I start to be clear, I should have never been in this relationship in the first place. He was a rebound, he was a solid five, I'm an eight and a half. I'm about a nine when I pretend to have a bigger booty than I do, it's an illusion. Um, however, like his mother let me in, you know, I popped up on him uh, without him knowing that I was coming. So maybe I should have texted first because then I wouldn't have walked in on this travesty. Um, I walk in and catch him red, lipped and i say red lipped because his lips were red because she was on her and he was still y'all this nigga is nasty okay disgusting and i just at, immediately got sick to my stomach i walked out i didn't even get mad i called his brother and i was like hey i just walked in on your little brother eating your wife's kitter cat and um he said what oh no nah. he left work came home and beat everybody up and i felt bad because i do not condone domestic violence i think that is very ghetto he should have never put his hands on her however 
that's kind of wild let me address this first everybody's like why would his mom let you in his mom's a snitch why would she do that his mom and i were really cool like she make fake pay stubs and she do a bunch of like hood stuff that made me think like oh i could depend on her because she'll do anything um Long story short, I logged into his Facebook later on that night. I found all these messages between him and his sister-in-law. That's how they contacted each other when they wanted to go upstairs or downstairs to do the nasty while his brother was at work. Um, and I screenshotted all the messages and I sent his family one big group chat. Y'all are really going to hate me now. <laughs> people are saying my story is cap as if people don't be earning their red wings amongst doing other things like eating poop and stuff like that. Like, Y'all, people are nasty. That's People have kinks, okay? I can't call people's kinks nasty. I don't want to kink shame, but people are nasty. So as you can imagine, things got really messy once I sent those screenshots to the family group chat. Um, Even his mother like turned on me and was like, why would you destroy my family like this? Like, you're this, you're that. And the wife was obviously saying that it was going to be on site next time she saw me. It wasn't on site the next time she saw me. Anyway, um touch on the wife real quick so the wife was really like she low-key was opioidy like you could see it in her skin nasty midget no seriously she just looked like she struggled with something um of the chemical substance and no shade to anybody who does but she also didn't have custody of her children and lived on a totally opposite coast of where her kids lived so um you know that's probably why she didn't care about nothing or care about life and that's why she slept with you know her husband's brother um the people who are curious i broke up with him that day like bro that'll do it okay um so yeah my ex and his sister-in-law tried to gaslight me like are you sure you saw what you thought you saw you didn't see that i was down there watching tv i'm sorry his lips were red i know what i saw and he was in the crotched position like crotched position i don't know anyway i'm just here <laughs> so the moral of this story is don't date dudes who do parkour because they don't care about life and most likely they don't care about you you know um so yeah that's that on that <laughs> Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, years later, when he finally got back in contact with me, he tried to say, oh, well, I had an oral fetish at this time and I just couldn't help it because I hadn't seen you in like two days. So he tried to blame it on a fetish as to why he cheated on me with his sister-in-law. This story is about the time I dated this toxic military man and I should snitch on you, but I'm not. Maybe. So boom, I was going through a lot in my previous relationship. So he was kind of just there for me, you know? So yeah, I'm very vulnerable at the time. He's doing things that my ex, you know, wouldn't do for me. He's older, he's more mature, seem like. So boom, one day he like, oh, I'm about to deploy. I'm like, bro, what? He like, yeah, I'm gonna deploy like within the next 30 days. So I'm all sad, I'm like, for real, you really finna leave me? And I was so sad because he was the only person I had at the time. Like he was the, like, I was going through a lot with friends, like people crossing me, like he was the only one there for me. And now you finna leave and deploy. So I'm like, you know what, whatever, I'm gonna hold you down because you was here for me when I was going through it. So we didn't establish like, yeah, we're together. He told me, oh, okay, before we get into this, let me tell you, for you mad. I am pending a divorce right now. Like, it's not all the way complete, but like, we started the paperwork. Only reason why I'm not gonna complete it is because now I got a little bit of time to worry about deploying. So I just don't have the time right now. But when I get back, I promise you, it's gonna be handled. I don't even talk to this girl, this, that, and the third. He told me. So boom, he leaves. He gave me like his grandma necklace. It might not have even been his grandma necklace. And I mean, he my boyfriend, so I wear his clothes and stuff. So I have on his necklace and one of his shirts. And I had made a little video. Get what? A girl DM me and was like, I know damn well that's not such and such. La, la, la. I know that shirt. I know that. I'm like, so boom, I text him. I'm like, who is this? Is this your wife in my DMs? He like, bro, chill. Just tell her like, look, tell her you my soldier. And you just crash in there for a little bit because technically we're still married. And she still wants to be with me, but I don't want to be with her. So she could hit me for adultery when, you know, it's not because I'm trying to get this divorce. He was smart. So I'm like, okay, bro. I'm going to vouch for you because you showed me the paperwork. Y'all, you say you're going to get the divorce when you get back. So, okay, I'm going to vouch for you. She believed that sh And then she showed me, like, you know, how they still together and sh Why? Why he was really still talking to his wife and me? So you know what I did? I ain't even tell him I knew. I ain't even tell him I knew that he was still talking to his wife and trying to deal with me, trying to have it cake and eat it too. I packed all my things. I got me another crib. And when he got back from deployment, guess what? House empty. Fridge empty. And where was I? Nowhere to be found. He get back, or he he was getting ready to get back. He like, oh, you gonna pick me up when I get back? I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. You think I picked that boy up? No. He had the nerve to want to meet with me when he made it back. Talk about where you at, where you... Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. He 
played this shit out me.